After many decades of disappointment, we are now in the golden age of Canada basketball. Can you remember when you first started caring about Canadi- the Canadian national team? Or did you care about the team growing up at all? I, I did. I, I mean, my earliest memory was the Sydney Olympics when, you know, Captain Canada at the time, Steve Nash, was leading that squad. It's not like they went on to medal or anything, but there was some promise there. And, uh, you know, they look pretty good. Again, you got Nash as the point guard. He's one of my favorite players of all time. I was actually in Australia during the 2000 Olympics, which mm, made okay. it extra cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after high school and before college, I did the whole travel thing for a year and I was spent a lot of time in Australia because I ran out of money and I was working on a tree farm. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I remember the Olympics and uh, I'm also like a weird Olympic fan. Like I get really into it um, as corrupt as it is, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I remember. And I remember at that time it was like, Oh, here we go. Here comes Canada. Yep, yeah. And you know, 20 plus years later, we're still hopefully now being able to say, oh, they're here. Here we go. Uh, it's just taken a lot longer than I think a lot of us thought it would. Yeah. Fast forward to today, Canada 3-0 and in the first group stage with a tournament leading plus 111 point differential. Now, Skeets, everyone thought this team was going to be good heading into the tournament, but has there been anything that has surprised you about the way they've been winning these early games? Uh, yeah, a lot. Um. Not Shea Gildas Alexander arguably playing as the best player in the tournament. You know, I think he's on the very short list uh, with Luca and a few others. That's not surprising because we've seen that in the NBA. We were hoping it would translate. But what Jordy Fernandez, this new Canadian head coach, like let's not forget, like Nick Nurse was the head coach yeah. uh, mm-hmm. for this team and then, you know, makes his way to Philadelphia and then decides to like sort of remove himself. So that was a, a quick turnover there. But what Fernandez has done with getting everybody to contribute has been uh, a little eye-opening and really refreshing. I think the other thing is like with a lot of these tournaments, and I want to give credit to Canada basketball, so many times these tournaments start and there's an early loss and everybody just goes, oh, lack of preparation or, or you know, guys not buying in and guys not showing up. There's that issue as well, mm-hmm. but it's a lot of lack of preparation this time. They invested like in a longer ramp up period. They played like really tough opponents in the warm up games that I was like watching like a sicko. You know, they're playing Germany, they're playing Spain, like they're getting their reps in. Team has seemed to mesh. And that's what's been so cool to see. The other part is defensively, they're like locked in. Yeah. Uh, and I think mm-hmm. we had high hopes like Dort, you know, obviously only played in one of the games so far, but Dylan Brooks, we know that's what like his calling card is. But even the bigs in like, Olenek and Dwight Powell, like everybody is on a string and that's where they're winning a lot of these games. Like just go on this stretch where they just shut down teams and then SGA takes over and they like come back from the first half deficit or a close game and sort of blow it open in the third quarter. They're dominating third quarters. So that's been really fun to see just defensively how locked in Jordy Fernandez has them. Yeah, it's very thundery because the Thunder were the best third quarter team in the league last year. And it's just like, I guess it's just like SGA's playbook, just like locked down and just kill people in the third quarter. It, I think you're right. He just like, he has, I mean, this is sort of just how he plays, right? You guys know this better than most. It's like, it looks like he's just sort of almost going through the motions of a game early <laughs> on. And he, yeah. he really does the cliche, let the game find him a little bit, yeah. or at least decides like, okay, now are, these are the five or six minutes that I really got to put my stamp on this game. And like, those are the elite players in the league. And no wonder the guys are like all NBA already. So um, yeah, that's it's been wild to see that. That's happened in so many of these games, even the warm-up mm-hmm. games, where you're sort of like, oh, okay, SGA is like not doing a whole lot, jumper's not falling, not getting to the line, looks a little frustrated with the whistle. He still has a weird good box score at the half. You're like, oh, okay, he's still playing all right. But then yeah, third quarters, uh, like OKC, he just he just takes over for a 10-minute stretch and it's like really helped really just blow these games open. <laughs> 